Hello and welcome to the top coding session number two. My name is Min Kim and today we're going to be going over the SRM 572 Div 1. Dip, dip, dip. Today we are going to go over the 250 point problem on the SRM Div 1. <coughs> so you're probably wondering like that's not challenging why would we be going over a 250 point problem as opposed to the thousand point problem today. And um, so I thought that this was actually an interesting problem. Um, I wasn't able to just very quickly get a solution within a few minutes, although the top person who actually did answer it was able to. Um, and I looked at the statistics, and about 75% of people solved it. And so thinking, hmm, well, 75%, that's a decent percentage. But I thought what was more important was um, how to get to the solution. So again, it's not impossible, but I think something of interest and something that's valuable is saying, how can you read a problem and figure out the solution? Uh, and so this is at least my mental process of how I got to it. Um, again, the, the guy who solved this the quickest did it in like three minutes, so that's pretty amazing. Um, not quite there, but you know, it's it's really just about improving yourself gradually. Um, Alright, so again, the purpose of this video is just kind of walking through how I worked through reading the problem, looking at samples, and figuring out what the solution was, as opposed to doing what I did in the previous video, which is dissecting the existing solution that was provided by TopCoder. The code here will be downloadable on NinjaCraft.com, and it is open source, so if in case anybody wants to take a look at it, you're welcome to do so. And so we'll start with the problem. So the problem statement says, you are a huge fan of an online programming contest called SRM. Really? That's interesting and coincidental. To participate in an SRM contest, you must first download an applet, call Arena, log in, blah, 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 recently devoid, blah, 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 blah. Okay, uh, SRM poses new rules for user's password. Uh, from now on, the first K characters of each password was matched to the last K characters. Okay, sounds simple enough. In this way, if someone enters a password with different first and last K characters repeatedly, it's considered to be an attack from hackers. Got it. However, you love your old password and do not want to change many characters from it. You are given a string old password representing your old password and int K. Um, so then return the minimum number of characters of old password that must be changed so that the string containing the first k characters of old password is equal to the string containing the last k characters of old password. Some, some, I think I just faded out for a little bit there, but let's, let's just take a look at example. Okay, um, so class, definition, method, okay that makes sense, blah blah blah, constraints, it'll be 50 characters. Um, so what's is important is someone did mention last time that I didn't really take into consideration um, the performance implication of like the big O and how many iterations the, uh, or I guess what optimizations were in that specific method. So this time we are going to uh, focus a little bit on that. And so, got it, 50 characters has to be able to reasonably perform through that. Uh, next is A through Z. Um, K will be between one and the number of characters old password inclusive. Okay, so first example, pretty simplistic. Top coder open and K equals five. So the first five letters of this password has to equal to the last five. And, um, you know, it seems pretty simple, but I see in their sample that they've, instead of just, I mean, to me, it would just make sense just taking the first five characters of that password and just slapping it on the back. Um, and then seeing the example, but they, they instead replaced a few different characters. So so let's see what exactly they did. So again, my slides, I love slides, right? So we have top coder open. The, top, the first line is what I assumed that I would do, where I would just straight replace the last five with which is on the first five, top CO, top CO. Um, but what they did was they changed it so that it was top CN and top CN. So I, I kind of looked at, well, what, what exactly are they doing here and how could you determine what has to change? So I, I took the first five characters and the last five characters and I, I noticed that there was a delta. So the first five, first letter, different, so that has to change. Um, third, le uh, Fourth letter and fifth letter, different, so they have to change. Second and third, they're the same, so they don't have to change. And I thought, okay, well, this is going to be a breeze. I should be able to write this program in like 10 seconds, right? Super easy, super easy. Um, but then, you know, decide, okay, let me let me keep enumerating through the examples and see if there's anything a little bit more complicated. So I go through and I see PU, PU, okay, four, yeah, first match is last, that's fine. And then the next one is L, O, L, and it says three, K equals three, and I'm like, hmm. And then it says, 
one has to change because in order for the string to be um, because it, it has an overlap something actually has to change because if I take the first three it's L O O and if I take the last three it's O O L so something has changed and they change L so I'm like okay somehow you have to write a program that does that and figure out what's the, what's the best way to do so so okay uh, just think about that next is arena uh, five characters okay and that just makes sense because it's taking the entire string so if 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 k equals the length of the string there's no work to do it's just it's just going to equal it and next there's um this crazy string with k equals 7 and it says 5 and i thought okay well i think that's a good place to start looking at how this can be uh, a more complicated situation so i thought about it so i have my string ama blah 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 blah, blah and i'm thinking well what would the new password have to be? So I I took what I did from the first example and I thought, okay, let me just see what characters are different. So I have A M A blah blah blah. And the first characters match. The fifth character matches. Six character matches. But then the rest of them are different. So I thought, oh well, maybe maybe just five characters are different. And yeah, that, that makes sense. So um, maybe I can just change those characters. But then I started looking at a sequence and I thought, okay, well. If the first k characters equal something, the last seven k characters have to match the original first. And then I realize, well, as I change, as I set a pass, as I set the password for the first k and the last k, if the first two characters of the last string is matching the first string, then it actually starts replacing the original string. So um, I guess I'm at this point where um, whatever's in the last K impacts the original string so there seems to be some sort of recursive pattern here where um, as I as I keep looping or iterating through it just seems to keep replacing the string sequence so so I look at it and I thought okay well based upon the repeating string sequence in the first part if I just take the first two characters and I repeat it AMA AMA over and over I come out with six characters and I thought, oh, maybe maybe that's the solution. There were six differences. But then, you know, I looked at the solution and saw that the example shows that it was actually five and not six. So I thought, why? And then I realized if I switched it out from AM to AK, uh, then I found only five differences as opposed to six. So I thought, okay, here I can figure out a solution. Um, so how can I how can I get to that? So I thought, okay. I have I know that I have certain characters to use whatever characters uh, exist in the existing string and I could do a brute force and if I were to do a brute force I could take all the existing potential characters and I could generate strings AA, AC, AD, AK, AM, AZ and then I could um, do a difference on that and see which one has the minimum number of characters that are different however if I did that again with 50 characters of length and the potential intersection and A through Z um, it could be anywhere from potential character, the big O could be potential characters, to the kth power, which is an exponential growth pattern, which would be um, un unprocessable if, if the string was big enough. So we figured there has to be some sort of other optimization. So going to the next part, we see that I just try to take a, an easier example. So I just created a string, AB, 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 and I said K equals 5. And I thought, okay, so if I take these strings, look at the differences, and see what it would do with exactly with the string. And I, when I was looking at this and the overlap, um, so the very first character needs to match from A and B. Um, and if we make them match, it's going to actually replace, replace the fourth character in the original string. So if I make it equal A, we go into the next string, so um, we modify it to A, but then we also modify the fourth character to A. And we actually proceed to the second character, and I thought, well, if we modified it to B, then I'd be running into kind of a similar issue where I'd, I'd recursively modify the original string again in a in a reverse direction. So I said, okay, let's move forward and let's just move them all to A. And then I thought, okay, so that makes sense, and that would relatively seem like it's the minimum number of characters to modify, um, relatively. So before, if you switched them all to A or switched them all to B. Um, so I thought, okay, there, there's still got to be some sort of elegant algorithm to it. So I um, took a different example and just enumerated A through J and said if K equals 7, well, what, what exactly pattern could I do? So um, the previous example I had 8 and I had K of 5 
And again, just two characters that were in the sequence, and I thought, okay, you know, how am I going to figure that out? And this one I had 10 character string, k equals 7. And I, and I noticed as I was going through my repeating sequence, it would modify the string with a delta. Again, I'm, and I was just doing a simple form. I have no strict algorithm at this point. I'm just experimenting. And so when I just do a straight copy of what was in the original string to replace what's in the next substring, guys, you don't see the hand motions, but I'm doing tons of hand motions. So uh, maybe I should move the webcam a little farther away so you can just see all this craziness. But um, anyways, um, so as I'm replacing the string, I noticed that it just it starts doing a repeating sequence of the first several characters. So the first part it just replaces A, so it switches out D with A, then it moves over to the second character and the second replaces B, and then replaces C, and then it has a repeating pattern. And um, then I notice like I guess it has to have a repeating pattern um, in order for it to follow that constraint of when the K overlaps. Okay, so I think we're getting to the point where I'm starting to figure out what's going on. I thought. Well, from here, what else do I have to figure out what, what to do? So I thought, okay, I think the best way to do that now is just to declare some additional additional variables so I can kind of clearly see what I'm trying to go at. So I just I de define some variables to find some patterns. And uh, so I thought, okay, I have my original string, my left substring, my right substring, um, the length of the original string, k, which is passing as argument, uh, the number of characters used, and also I have something which is called the number of non-intersecting characters, and that's when... Um, the original string length has a k that is greater than half of the string and you have to do this weird repeating pattern. Okay, so going through, I, I, looked, I went back to my example and I just started defining variables and I said, okay, if the original string is length, a, or if the original string is a, b, a, b, a, b, b, left is whatever, right is whatever, and I thought, okay, original length is 8, k is 7, characters use are 2, non -intersecting character, number of non-intersecting characters 1, and I realized, okay, well, if if number of non-intersecting characters one, all of the characters have to be the same. Otherwise, um, the repeating pattern won't work. And then if it's two, it either all has to be the same or has to be every alternating character. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I think I'm starting to see something. And then if non-intersect <coughs> number of non-intersecting characters three, then every three characters have to be the same. Um, so then I realized I, I actually need one more variable, which is i for the index of the character of the original password string, and I realized that any changes to um, the original string um, will impact um, the string of uh, the, the next index of the string plus the, or plus the index offset of the non-intersecting character. So, for example, if the non-intersecting character is three, then it's like the pattern has to be three characters over and over and over. And if the non-intersecting character is four, it's four patterns over and over and over. And thus, it can also be permutations of that. So again, could be potentially expensive. But um, and I thought, okay, so this is this is becoming clearer and clearer. Um, <coughs> so when I looked at this, I thought, okay, well, hmm, hmm, I, I think I get it. And then so I took back to this this is the first um, the first string, and again realizing that there's a specific grouping, I thought, okay, well, so now um, because the number of non-interesting characters is two. There's only going to be two indices, and I will start collecting characters. So for the first index, I have A M A B C K C D and J. I'm sorry, J C whatever. Um, so the first index, I notice that A repeats twice, C is once, D is once, Z is once. Second index, it has M is once, V is once, K is twice. And I thought, oh, this this clearly, you know, when when you look at the pattern, you're trying to find a minimum number of changes. And if you look at the minimum number of changes, you're pretty much just saying, um, since I see that a character is used so many times in a specific index, then that's going to have the least amount of changes because then I, I just have to replace all the other characters to those. So in this string, that's why you would use A and K. Then you would find the differences. And that was great. So I thought, okay, this is no problem. I can write a program for this because now I know what I'm going to do. I have a plan. <coughs> so what I, that's what I did. I created a little function. And if we look at the code, um, we notice that there is, you know, I define the left string, the right string. And if, they, if they're equal at the very beginning, I just say, uh, well, return no differences. Next, I say if the length is less than, um, if k is less than the length of the string divided by 2, then I can, I don't have to do any of the intersecting stuff. I can just say if it doesn't match, just determine what are non-matching, and then return the number of non-matching characters. Super simple. So for the next thing, um, I create a little data structure called index occurrence, which is kind of uh, a memory view of this. Um, 
I don't know, I can't see my hand. I don't know how far I have to go back. But anyways, um, so it's the first index and the second index, you know, something housing the index indices and the characters. So if we look at index occurrence, we just have a dictionary of the character and the number of occurrences there that are there, which is interesting. We have, a, you know, something that boxes the character and the number of occurrences. And then we have a method that just increments a counter, and then it also returns the character that's most commonly occurred in that specific index. Okay, great. And then so if we go back, we just see that um, I have I create a little function called observe occurrence. It enumerates through the string, and for each, uh, it'll it just does the mo it, as it enumerates, it does the modulo of the number of non-inclusive characters, so it knows which index. Um, and then it just increments, it just it does the add, observ add observation, so it increments the index on for each character that's found. And then at the end, I do a sequence that I actually generate the new password based upon that, because again, that was just a pattern that I figured out, and I thought, okay, let me just go with that. And then I just run my same non-matching function um, to, to compare the old password with new password to say, just return the, delta, the number of characters that are different. And it turned out that it worked. Um, so, again, those are those are kind of the patterns and the the strategies that I use to figure out what to do, and we have a little bit more time. So what I also want to do is I want to show the solution that Top Coder had because it's really clever. Um, and again, my my opinion is that it's hard to read, um, but again, the algorithm is really interesting and and it is a little bit more efficient. So the the big O of my specific function it actually enumerates to the list twice, so technically two n, but they still consider that order n. Um, and the top quarter function actually enumerates through it once, so it's actually twice as fast, but again, still just order n. Um, okay, so if we look at top coders function, um, I think I did change a little bit of here just so that it compiles in .NET as opposed to C++ and also um, to make it slightly more human readable. <laughs> but what it does, if you look at it, it's very clever. Um, it does a for loop. On the first outer for loop, it's actually enumerating either through the length, <coughs> the number of non-intersecting characters, which is, interestingly enough, what they have is old password length minus k, um, or that i is just less than k, right? And that's that's convenient if, um, this this essentially makes it so that if, um, if the actual number of non-intersecting characters is greater than whatever the string length divided by two, um, you, you don't have to actually have that big if condition. They, they just optimize it efficiently in one. And then for every index um, where I had my index of hash, they, they actually generated a little array. And then they enumerate through the password from the starting point of the existing index that the character that they're on, and they increment it by the number of the non-intersecting characters. Right, so really clever because again, it it just it just skips a sequence and goes um, directly goes to the next character, counts the character, and so this is this is another interesting part where where I generate the string and then do a comparison. They directly just use you know pure logic to say oh we we know how many characters by a clever op, uh, an algorithm. So what they do is every character of the index that they iterate through they increment a counter while they're also mapping the number of times a specific character is iterated through. And then at the very end, it takes that counter and subtracts it by the number of occur the, the most frequent number of occurrences. And then they uh, do the sum of that and then they return it. So to, to make that slightly easier, if I go back to this example, what it essentially is doing is as um, it'll go through the string, it'll first look at A, and it'll say 1. It'll go through the second string, and it'll say 2. Um, third string three, four, and um, four and five. So if if we just look down at the left count corner, so we see that there was five items processed, and then it subtracts it by the character that most commonly happens. So it takes it takes the counts dot max. Um, uh, so it's just returning the character that has the most counts, which in this sequence a is the one that happens most frequently. So the actual count of a is two. So it takes two subtracted by five and it holds three. And then it then it goes to the next index sequence and it increments one, two, three, four, and it has four and subtracts it by the max uh, sequence, which is k and has two in, uh, two indices um, or two entries in it. So then it takes three plus two and then it has a total of five. And so that's how they come to their sum. So again, it's, it's really clever. And um, I think it's really interesting how they do it. And it's a little bit more efficient. Um, but yeah, so otherwise, I think that's generally what I have for now. So if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave a comment. Um, if you like what you see, please subscribe. And I hope you guys enjoy the show. Good night.